Hello everyone, it's Religious Fanboy here again. And today we are... This video will be different from the other anime devotion videos. Due to... Some stuff in the episode, there is quite a bit of blood and creepy imagery in this episode. So, I do not... Recommend the episode to for people that would be squeamish of that, especially people under the age of adults. Um, and don't really recommend watching me this episode, and it's able to be skipped and the only references that will be made to the episode will be brief things that as they pertain to the talking points in this video. And with that disclaimer, I will move on to the text for this video, which comes from the book of Matthew, in chapter 18, verses 15 through 17. If your brother sins against you, go and tell him his fault between you and him alone. If he listens to you, you have gained your brother, but if he does not listen to you, take one or two others along with you, that they so that every charge may be established by the evidence of two or three witnesses. If he refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church, and if it ref and if he refuses to listen even to the church, let him be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector. Um, just to give some scriptural information, like some background information on the passage, the book of Matthew is the first of the three synoptic gospels, and the three synoptic gospels, are Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Nope, are Matthew, Mark, and Luke. And John is one of the Gospels, but it is written in a different style, so it is not considered to be one of the three synop... It's not considered to be a synoptic Gospel. And by understanding the original audience of the book of Matthew would help us to understand some of the cultural references in this text. This is most commonly referred to as the Jewish gospel. Matthew's gospel, its original audience, were to both Jews that... Uh, as a way of ministering to them and sharing the gospel with them, as well as the gospel written for Christians that had been Jews. Hence why terms such as Gentile and tax collector are used. Gentile is a term that was used and it was used to basically define anyone who is not Jewish. And there was still very big separation even among Christians at the time of the early church and at the time of this being written. And like the cultural view held of Gentiles is why this is most, why the term Gentile is most 
likely used here as a derogatory term. And we can assume this context also by the other type of person that is listed, which is a tax collector. Um, this is actually referenced in the series of The Chosen, especially in regards to Matthew, where a lot of the other Christian disciples that were, that grew up Jewish and had been and still are Jews they they've not necessarily split yet um in in the show um and also at this time well not at the time of like what is being documented, but as of the time of this being written, they would have probably had been separate, and like the the um term the way probably would have been established. I would assume. This chapter has a lot to do with talking about repentance and specifically what Jesus taught about repentance. Um, this chapter, Matthew chapter 18, actually includes Matthew's um, recollection, like what he remembered and what he, like what he perceived of the parable of the lost sheep and of the prodigal son. Um, which now leads to my talking points. The first talking point is essential rebuking needs to be done Gently and on a personal level. This is described and illustrated here in the passage where, in order for us to like give people hope of repentance, it is better to first love them and meet them where they're at. And that doesn't mean like that we don't like we don't have goal of rebuking them. We show love through compassionately rebuking them in a with a personal level and with humility and gentleness. You aren't going to save that many people, at least you're not going to help save people in the right way with giving in the hands of wrathful God sermons. There, there was a famous Puritan sermon called In the Hands of a Wrathful God, where it's also where the concept of fire and brimstone preaching came from and it's basically the idea of scaring people into following Jesus and since as Christians we believe in a desire for a relationship aspect there's the fire and brimstone approach is blatantly contradictory to what we're wanting to teach and what God wants and desires in our relationships with him and what he wants us to desire in our relationships with God.
and the second point is repentance regardless of the sin is a call for celebration. This alludes to what is said in in verse like in the passage where it says for you have if he listens to you you have gained a brother we also see this idea of celebration especially in Luke's account of this where there is a verse that says there will be more rejoicing in this followed the parable of the lost sheep where Jesus is thought to have said anyone for there will be more rejoicing in heaven for the one who repents than for the 99 who were righteous and never needed to repent. Um... And we also see this in the prodigal son parable where despite the foolish mistakes and ill intent of just asking for his inheritance, basically saying that he would rather his father be dead so he could get the inheritance than, than continue to have his have a close relationship with his father. Um which even the thought of hatred or to kill someone in your thoughts is considered to be death, and even though sins to God and Jesus are all equal, there are some societal, like in society, some sins are viewed greater or worse than others, such as society's comparison to comparison of lies to murder, like, we would assume, like, the act of, like, we grew up viewing that the act of murder is worse than lying. And society wouldn't, the Bible makes a connection between thoughts of hatred and death being, like, murder being the same. Jesus says that to hate someone means you've already killed, you've already murdered that person in your heart or in your mind. And, but when we were, when our, when a brother or sister repents, when when our brother or sister in Christ repent, um, we need to remember to show God's grace and unconditional love to them by forgiving them and not becoming self righteous in that moment, but celebrating and 
not because of the sin they had committed, but because of the fact that they had repented. And the last passage, I mean, the last talking point is that sheep are not meant to be shepherds. Um, God does use us to rebuke and give repentance, but like said in the passage, if we, if people refuse to repent, to, it doesn't say to stop loving them, because we're called to love our neighbors, and in that context, using those words, Gentiles and tax collectors, no matter how we may feel about them or their profession, they are still our neighbors. And we, it's hard to, like, we want to save, we want to help save people, but there's time and place for every season, and we can continue to pray for them. But it's important to come to terms with the fact of us, like, us maybe not being the one that eventually convicts them to, to repent. And this is the one illustration that I'm going to reference to the show where Shizu, in the end, he tried his best to get them to come to terms of the of the horrible things going on in their country and getting them to see that they can't blame the radio waves. It's just that humans are flawed, even the people there in that country. And they need to come to terms with that and repent and, like, rebuke those heinous actions that took place. Rather than coming up with excuses and reasons to shift blame from themselves in order to not have to deal with the uncomfortable conversations that make up accountability and rebuking. And even though those conversations are uncomfortable at times, they are helpful and important in order for us to repent and come closer to God and overcome sin. And with that being said, may God be with you, and I will see you next time. Bye.